Hello there, I'm Fantasius and today I'll cover the topic of fast leveling in the Shadowlands pre-patch. Before I get into the subject in question, allow me to quickly remind you that with the Shadowlands pre-patch now live, leveling as a whole has been revamped into something called time walking campaigns, also known as Chromi Time. What you should get from that is that you can now basically level anywhere and however you like, with a new BFA max level being 50. After testing some playthroughs, I can tell you it's pretty great as leveling now feels rewarding and refreshing contrary to how it felt in the last couple of years. I highly recommend picking the Legion expansion if you're not just into max speed. This is because during leveling you will be able to unlock some artifact skins which you might want to take advantage of due to the newly lifted artifact transmog restrictions. Aside from your class campaign, at level 45 you'll also be able to start the Broken Show campaign for your class mount or even Argus if you'd like to unlock some older light races, as the respective exalted reputations are no longer required. Those that are here just for the efficiency part, let us move on. Your alt leveling experience will be divided into three stages. Stage 1 is the preparation on your main character, which involves getting heirlooms. They are pretty cheap to get as just a non-upgraded version should be enough. This will scale up to level 29 if not upgraded and cost 500 gold for a piece or 750 for a weapon. Upgrading them is a bit more expensive but not necessary if you don't want to make that investment. You can get them from a vendor that is on top of the Orgrimmar or gates for Horde or in the Hall of Explorers and Iron Forge for Alliance. While they may have indeed lost their bonus experience gains and got replaced with a set that is pretty underwhelming, the reason we get them is that because they are non-replaceable items that you can enchant with bonuses that would work even at level 1, and thus making your character more powerful on your first 30 levels or more if you decided to upgrade them. If you didn't, you can just replace them with higher item level items once you've hit around level 40. Enchant those heirlooms by buying them from the auction house or crafting them yourself. The only three enchants that are important are the weapon, chest and neck slot, as their power after being scaled down is still ridiculously strong and it will help you out tremendously. Use Crusader for strength users as it's ridiculously overpowered at low level, Elemental Force for non-strength melee characters or Mark of War sunk for any other spec. For the neck, use Mark of the Hidden Satyr, a proc effect that will do non-negligible amounts of damage to your target, and for the chest use Glorious stats because, well, it's a nice amount of stats. If you want to go into more expensive territory and less powerful bonuses, here's a list of good enchants you can use on your heirloom items. Keep in mind that if you want to use a gem for the belt buckle or even suck at the Gower Sheldon weapon that dropped from him at the end of Mist of Pandaria, as they have become usable at level 1, the best one you can use are the Burning Crusade epic ones because they do not require a minimum item level, thus being usable at level 1. For those, search for Crimson Spinels for our primary stat or potentially better Shadow Song Amethyst and Pyro Stones for a secondary and primary stat combo. Now you can get consumables, and the only important one is the Drought of 10 Lands, which is a bonus stat and XP potion that lasts for an hour. It's available for 5 BFA service medals, which are also known as the Warfront or Assault Currency. If you happen to have none, the best way to get a lot of them is to do one heroic dark shore if available and completing both quests at the same time for 65 medals. I won't blame you if you do not want to do as little as one Warfront, but if you're looking for the vendor, he's located near the Warfront queuing table. There are also some less important but still useful consumables, such as Goblin Gliders, but Remember that starting at level 30 you will be able to use flying mounts, swiftness potions which you can get for very cheap these days, drums of fury for some potential very big balls, and the mount equipment such as the water walking or day's immunity one. Now you can mail those items to your new already created character, and as long as it's on the same realm as your main you'll be able to send anything you want to him. If he is however on a different realm you will only be able to send enchanted helms and the xp potions as they are of bind on account quality. While this is not strictly a consumable and requires to potentially go out of your way, once on your alt, Hallow's End, which lasts from the 18th to the 31st of October, offers a refreshable 2 hour 10% XP and reputation bonus. To get it, just click on the Workerman's Fire in front of Stormwind for Alliance or on a pile of ash in the ruins of Lordaeron, so just outside Undercity for Horde. Once Hallow's End comes to an, well, uh, end, the Darkmoon Fair will start the 1st of November and last for another week, meaning you'll be able to get the XP bonus from the Carousel there if you'd like to. Now it's time for stage 2 which is the intro. This means either doing your starting zone as a demon hunter or a death knight, doing your first 10 levels if not one of those classes, and in that case pick the new starting zone of exiles reach. Yahoo! While it was designed for new players, which you will definitely not forget as you'll get new equipment available pop-up notifications at about the same rate as ads on any website these days, it is a remarkable questing experience for everybody and you should get to level 10 in about 45 minutes of playtime. Keep in mind, however, that there are currently no mailboxes in the new starting zone of Exile's Reach, so you'll have to use non-enchanted heirlooms for those first 10 levels if you chose that starting zone. Or you can simply skip stage 2 altogether by creating any allied race as you'll start at level 10. And now it's time for stage 3, which is the level 10 to 
to 50 part which you can do in 3 different efficient ways with a bonus special mention. Let's start with the fastest, which actually is in the BFA expansion. <laughs> After some proper testing, it is possible to reach level 50 in about 3.5 hours by having a friend summon you and boost you through freehold dungeon spams, with an efficient run taking about 6 minutes, so 10 runs in an hour. Even if you were to be faster, it doesn't really matter as you'd get locked out of the instance by the server as the anti-botting limit is 10 dungeons per hour. I realize this is not exactly an engaging gameplay experience if you're being boosted by somebody else, but if you're after speed leveling, I haven't found anything faster. Keep in mind that doing the 6 minute runs in the pre-patch is not easy to do and consists of clearing most of the dungeon with pulls such as this, this, or even this. I will be doing them for you and viewers in the coming weeks of pre-patch at twitch.tv slash so feel free to follow me if you don't want to miss out on them or comment down below if you'd like me to do a video of how I do them. The method number 2 is also in BFA, however it requires an organized party of 3. Yes, you've guessed it, it's Island Expedition Spam. While it might be a little bit more engaging than being boosted through Freehold, as you're farming islands with friends, it's still farming islands, so the level of enjoyment, especially if done repeatedly, is very questionable. However, if you and your group are to be efficient, you can reach level 50 in about 5-6 to six hours and as a bonus, get some island coins, pets, transmogs or even mounts. And I'm sure you can make a nice amount of gold if you were to sell those transmogs a couple months from now. Method 3 is one that is not exactly groundbreaking and it's Warlords of Draenor questing. Even though the XP rewards got nerfed in this expansion, it remains the best way to level up solo while not trying too hard nor running with a stopwatch, as you should be able to get to level 50 in about 8-12 to 12 hours. In order to stay efficient, I recommend just using the Azeroth Hotted Pilot add-on, which I'll link in the description of the video as it is now updated for the pre-patch. Congratulations, you have now become a slave to the objective arrow and will only do its bidding. However, since you are here to learn something useful, let me give you 3 quick tips. As of patch 9.0, you can now install add-ons without having to relaunch the game. To do that, extract them into the interface addon in your game installation folder, or update it with an add-on client such as the Twitch client, then type slash reload in game as they should appear right after. Tip number 2 is scenario skipping. After picking the Iron Horde expansion as your crummy time choice, head to the Blasted Lands. Once you arrive, abandon the quest from Khadgar, which means you shouldn't have any quests in your quest log at that point. Once you've done that, simply walk through the Dark Portal, as it should put you straight after the Tenant scenario, effectively skipping it, allowing you to start doing the big experience run faster. And lastly, even if you're not into PvP, consider activating War Mod, as it will grant you an additional 10% more XP for Horn or about 30% for Alliance, as well as powerful talents to use while questing, knowing that your first drain or zone is faction specific, so you shouldn't expect any PvP combat to happen. Now that those three methods are covered, my special mention goes out to the Legion expansion. While it's not the fastest way to level solo, it remains pretty solid and has a lot of potential goodies for your alts and new characters alike, as mentioned in the beginning of the video. Just like Draenor's entry scenario, you can skip the Broken Shore intro by simply leaving the instance group once you're inside the scenario. Then, head off to the god that gave you the final preparations quest and ask him to send you straight to Dalaran. From that point forward, you're on your own. This should cover most of the things you need to know about efficient leveling up to level 50 in Shadowlands. As mentioned before, I highly recommend not rushing your leveling experience if you don't have to, as it really felt enjoyable to level again and made me spend some lovely time with my friends, so maybe you could too. When it comes to us, we decided to go into older zones like Kalimdor and Northrend for nostalgia reasons, but also finishing up a lore master achievement that we started years ago but never got to finish it. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to do the known formula of like, sub, share and bell thingy, and comment down below which topic would you like me to cover next. For those that stay till the end, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys on Twitch or in the next one. Goodbye.